So good afternoon, everyone. So this is our second session for a uh, second group or second batch for our uh, physical science uh, virtual class this afternoon. And for today, we will be talking about composition of atoms. Okay, composition of atoms. All right. So you know what atoms are, di ba? These are, sabi natin, the smallest particle that make up matter. Okay? So why do we need to know the composition of atoms? Kasi di ba sinasabi natin, okay, that uh, certain properties o oh, parang ganito lang nalagyan. There are properties that you observe when you have uh, for example, a piece of matter on your hand. Whatever you observe as properties nitong matter na ito are actually what? Manifestations of what is happening at the atomic or molecular level. So, ano yung behavior ng mga atoms doon, how they are bonded to one another, to other atoms, etc., etc. Okay, all of these are uh, manifestations that you observe at the atomic level. So, in other words, if you, we put that into a statement, we can say that what we see at, or what we observe at the macroscopic level is because of what is happening at the atomic or molecular level. So it's just right that we take a look at some uh, overview of what classification of matter is. Kasi ito yon. So this is an overview or a, uh, sabi natin, a diagram that gives you an overview of the classification of matter. Okay? So this is a diagram. Para bang perspective na ito of what's in store for uh, about matter. Of course, it's not as simple as that, uh, as you see it. Uh, it's more complex than you can imagine. It's more complex than you can imagine, okay? But what's important here is that you can see from the diagram that there are two forms of matter, okay? So we have here, dalawa lang ang form ng matter. We have the pure substances and we have the mixtures. Okay? So, makikita nyo, what are mixtures? These are mixtures of pure substances. For example, ano ba examples ng pure substances? We have alcohol, water, salt, things like that. And if you mix them, alright, just combine them. Alright? You have mixtures. Okay? But with substances, these are characterized by what? Constant composition. And it's always homogeneous, sabi nga. But mixtures are either heterogeneous or homogeneous. And we know that pure substances are either uh, elements or compounds, okay? Elements or compounds. Ayan, elements or compounds, okay? So let's take a look at that in a simpler presentation. Yeah, there are two forms of matter. And this table here gives you a description of these two forms of matter. Okay? So, substances, sabi natin, have definite and constant composition. Right? Definite and constant. And this is the reason why, with this definite and constant composition, will uh, you will be observing distinct properties. Okay? Kaya sabi dito, uh, elements making up compounds lose their identity due to chemical changes taking place. So, if we go back to do sa diagram natin, sabi dito, di ba? Yan. Uh, elements, okay, are what make up atoms. Uh, sorry, uh, compounds. Okay? So, makikita nyo later on that uh, compounds, well, mamaya, didiscuss natin in detail. Ano ba yung mga yan, composition ng mga yan. But for now, it's better that you, you, you see it uh, this way, na substances have their own distinct properties. It's because of the composition, okay? The constant composition of the substances, which you cannot separate just by physical means. Ano ba yung physical means? Diba? Yung mga, you cannot separate by filtration, you cannot separate by condensation, diba? 
Now, if you look at the mixture side, okay, if you look at the mixture side, makikita nyo dito, sabi dito, mixtures do not have distinct properties. Why? Because the substances forming the mixtures retain their own individual properties. So, in that case, you can separate the components of mixtures, of mixtures by physical means. Like, for example, if you have a mixture of salt and water, diba? you dissolve, uh, let's say, table salt, which is a sodium chloride, okay? Or other salts, which you dissolve in water. Diba? How do you separate? Diba? You try to evaporate. And if you want to... Um, to uh, if you want to collect your water separately, then you condense the water that you have evaporated, diba? And then after all the water has been separated, you're left with the salt. So uh, condensation, evaporation are just physical means of separation. Samantalang dito, okay, in, in substances, for example, you have the compound water, diba? Or you cannot separate, simply separate uh, hydrogen into oxygen, okay, uh, by physical means, by evaporation or things like that, okay. So we will be uh, elaborating that a little later on, okay. But I hope this is clear, itong sinasabi natin about these two forms of substances, okay. Ayan. All right, so moving on. Okay, so to be able to understand the composition of atoms, so because that's what, what we're discussing this afternoon, diba? Let's start with discussing Dalton's atomic theory. Now, uh, for your information class, it is actually Dalton's atomic theory that really paved the way to the present idea, okay? Of course, with some other uh, studies, Okay, and experiments, but ito yung nag-start nag ng uh, sabihin natin <clears throat> breakthrough in the structure of an atom and in fact in the discovery of other elements. Because if you look at, if you look through uh, the history, uh, scientists believe that there were only four elements then, di ba? Apat lang ng elements. But there was no clear... Uh, Sabi natin, clear concept about composition ng mga elements na yun, Okay? So, let's continue. <clears throat> right. First, uh, elements are composed of extremely small particles that are called atoms. Ayan. Small particles that are called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical, having the same size, mass, and chemical properties. The atoms of one element are different from the atoms of other elements. So, basically, class, if you look through this statement, parang describe lang niya or if it's uh, correct to say that it is defining what elements are. Okay? So, it's simply made up of extremely small particles called atoms. In other words, okay, it is the atom that bears the properties of the elements and if you if you take out or or collect atoms from the same element you see that all of these atoms are identical okay so they have the same mass they have the same properties ayan oh, but if the atoms come from uh from different elements then these atoms would be different from each other. Okay? Yan. They will be different from each other. Kaya nga sabi dito is uh, atoms from well, different elements differ from each other. Para bang, uh, if you have two elements, right? Like for example, sodium and magnesium and then you collect many atoms from sodium, all of them are the same. And then you collect many atoms from magnesium, all of them are the same. But if you take out one atom from sodium and then take out one atom from magnesium, then these two atoms are different. Yun yung ibig sabihin yan. Okay, number two. <clears throat> okay, number two. <clears throat> 
compounds are composed of atoms of more than one element. In any compound, the ratio of the numbers of atoms of any two of the elements present is either an integer or a simple fraction. Okay, now, if the first statement described what elements are, the second one describes what compounds are. So, parang sinasabi dito na compounds, kasi class, ganito yan eh. Uh, elements and compounds are what we see, these are the matter that we see around us. Okay? Mostly, karamihan dyan, like for example, yung mga sugars, yung, yung rocks that we see, or uh, ano pa ba mga iba pang substances, um, the, the salt, uh, vinegar, karamihan compounds. A lot that we, every substance that we encounter around us are all compounds. Diba? Yung mga gasoline, or diba, that we put in our cars. Okay? Ayan. Uh, these are all compounds. So, ano yung mga elements? Mostly, most of the elements that we, we see around us are mostly the metals. Yung mga, uh, except for the alloys, ano? Ma, uh, uh, Except for, for those. But mostly elements are yung mga uh, pure gold or, or, or the gases that we know, yung water vapor or distilled water. These are all compounds. So compounds are what? Composed of, of more than one atom. Yun yun. Okay? Uh, compounds are composed of more than one atom which are combined Okay, in fixed and constant composition. Okay, now let me explain this one. Kanina nakita natin, di ba? Sabi ito sa, uh, you remember the table that I showed you earlier uh, with the two forms of matter? So we have substances and mixtures. Now with the substances, substances are either elements or compounds. Yan yung substances because they have fixed constant composition. And with this fixed and constant con composition come their distinct properties. Ano pag sinabing distinct properties? Ibig sabihin, sarili niya yun. Yun yung, yung kanyang characteristics. Yun yung kanyang properties that is distinct only for for that particular substance. For example, for example, water. Only water of all the liquids has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Wala nang iba. Nakuha nyo? And of all the gases that we breathe, it is only oxygen that is essential for our survival. Wala nang iba. And why? Because there's something in oxygen na we're so dependent on. Diba? Oh. Ayan mga yan. Because there are certain uh, reactions in our metabolisms that require oxygen. So kung walang oxygen, hindi tayo mabubuhay. So yun yung ibig sabihin ko ng distinct properties such that any change in composition would be a whole new set of properties for that composition. For example, oh, sige, this is my, uh, I always give this example because this is the most familiar to you. If I use other uh, substances and then you naman alam ko yung mga substances na yun, baka may harapan kayo ma-imagine, di ba? So I'm going to use uh, the substance water, okay? So water is made up of what? Atoms. Diba? Hydrogen and oxygen, right? Tama? Hydrogen and oxygen. Tama ba? Okay? Alright. So, in what proportion? O, diba? Two hydrogen and one oxygen. Okay? Two hydrogen and one oxygen. Tama? Kaya nga H2O is the formula. Now, looking back, at the atoms that make up. Now, listen. H2O is a compound. Alright? And H2O is a combination of hydrogen, which is an element, and oxygen, which is an element. You got that? Now, uh, compound, the smallest particle is the molecule. Oh, you cannot say the smallest particle of H2O is... Uh, the atom, kasi compound siya. So, the particle that make it up, uh, you call it a molecule. Diba? And looking back, 
the 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 elements or the atoms that make H two O are what hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, let's take a look at some distinct properties of hydrogen. It's a gas. All right. Normally, under natural condition, it is a gas. It burns in air, and we don't even if we don't breathe. Hydrogen gas, it's okay. If we breathe it in air because it's present in rare amount, it's okay as long as it's not in excess. Because if we breathe or inhale excess, okay, excess hydrogen, we might feel discomfort or probably sick or something. I don't know what would be the, the effect, but it's not part of our system. But oxygen, on the other hand, it also exists normally as a gas, but it does not burn in air. Diba? Okay? It's a gas. And we breathe. We inhale. We inhale oxygen. Okay? We cannot live without. Yun yung mga properties na sinasabi ko that are distinct to these two gases. But the moment they combine into a definite proportion na H2O, na wala na yung properties ng hydrogen na nandun sa H2O, na wala na rin yung properties ng oxygen when it became H part of H2O. Why? Because a whole new substance called H2O has been produced. And with this uh, composition comes its own distinct properties. Okay? What are examples? O, di ba? Water normally, under normal condition, exists as a liquid. But take note, the atoms from which they have been uh, combined are gases. Oh, tapos, after it became water, H2O, it's already liquid. Normally. Although it can be changed into a gaseous form, into, into water vapor, certain conditions have been met. Kaya naging water vapor, but we're talking about under normal conditions. Alright? It's liquid. And you don't inhale water, right? You don't inhale water. Because if you do, you will drown. Tama? Oh, yan. These are just examples of what? <coughs> Distinct properties that we are talking about. Oh, isa pa para makita nyo. Sabi nyo, combination, sige, dagdagan natin ng isang oxygen, yung H2O, magiging H2O2. Alright? And if that would be, alright, a, uh, uh, a fixed and constant composition, yung properties ng H2O would be lost already as H2O2. Kahit sabi mong isang atom lang naman ang difference. Why? Oh, diba? Let's take a look at the properties of water. Okay? Kasi uh, everything that we uh, that we can use as a basis to know if new substances have been formed is because of the properties that we observe. Because we do not see atoms, right? We do not see molecules. So, we just depend on the observable distinct properties. Okay? So, H2O, you, you can drink it. Diba? You, you, you use water for, for taking a bath or you use water in cooking, watering the plants, cleaning. Why do you use water in those purposes? Because of the properties of water, right? Now, pag naging H2O2, you can no longer do uh, use H2O2 for the same purposes. Why? Because the properties have already changed. Ano ba yung H2O2? For all you know, H2O2 is yung very familiar sa inyo na agua oxygenada or hydrogen peroxide. Sige, subukan yung inumin, yung agua oxygenada. Okay? So, that's that's it. Right? I hope it's clear. Alright? Number three. A chemical reaction involves only the separation combination or rearrangement of atoms it does not result in their creation or destruction all right statement one described what an element is statement two described what a compound is and then if you look back to sa ating 
uh, table kanina of the forms of matter, sabi doon, uh, compounds cannot be separated by chemical means, uh, sorry, by physical means, but only by chemical means. All right, so that means when hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water, a chemical reaction has taken place. Okay, how do you know that a chemical reaction has taken place? Okay, yan. When the properties that are distinct of the substance, okay, have been lost, and then a whole new set of distinct properties has been uh, formed. Yun lang yun. It does not result in the creation or destruction. Ano ibig sabi niyan? It's like this. Diba, hydrogen is made of atoms. Oxygen is made of atoms. And then H2O is a combination of these two atoms in a fixed and constant proportion. Okay? Now, what do we mean by statement 3? It means that the hydrogen atom that is in hydrogen gas... Okay, is still the same as the hydrogen atom that is in H2O. Oh, yan ang ibig sabihin niyan. Okay, or the oxygen atom that is, okay, in, um, in, in, in oxygen gas, still the same oxygen atom that is okay in H2O. Alright? Yeah. So, hindi siya nag-result into uh, their creation or destruction. Okay? Ayan. Alright? So, moving on. Let's continue. Ayan. Now, if we just focus on Dalton's atomic theory, all right, we would think that the atom is uncatable or indivisible. Okay? Ayan. Noong unang panahon, that could be true. All right? That could be true during the time of Dalton's atomic theory. Right? In fact, class, for all you know, the word atom was derived from the Greek word atomos, which means uncatable but with the advancement of technology just like now the atom um, was discovered to have been consist of even smaller particles and what are these particles these are the electrons protons and neutrons okay on the screen class you see a table that gives you the characteristics of each of these particles okay so, here on the second column, these are the actual masses of these particles. Okay? So, that means in grams, the actual mass of an electron is 9.1095 times 10 to the negative 28 gram. Okay? So, it's very, very small that you can assume it to be massless. Alright? Napakaliit. And then proton, this is the actual mass. Neutron is the actual mass. And you observe that protons and neutrons have what? Exactly or equal uh, masses. Okay. And looking at that, if we simplify these numbers and come up with a mass unit, then you say that electron compared to protons and neutrons can be assumed to be massless. All right? These values here uh, tells us that the bulk of the mass of an atom, okay, is contributed by the protons and neutrons alone, okay? Yan. Kaya yung atomic mass unit is what? Uh, majority comes from protons and neutrons, okay? Now, here, these are the actual masses. So, sorry, a charge. Okay, so um, an electron 
has a charge of 1.6022 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. Okay? Charge class is measured in Coulomb. Mass is measured in gram. All right? Now, you notice that exactly the same new values ng electrons and photons, only they differ in sign. So, you have a negative and a positive sign. And neutrons are particles that are electrically neutral. Okay? Electrical. So, kaya zero. Okay? So, if, if we uh, simplify in terms of charge unit, we say that an electron is negative 1, and a proton is positive 1, okay? Now, class, I want you to understand that the charges that you know in nature, ito ang origin, okay? This is the origin of the charges that you know in nature, and ito yung mga responsible sa mga electricity that you know, okay? Yan. So, that is why uh, atoms are made up of this three particles. Okay? Now, may I ask you now, okay, you can write in the chat box. Okay, tatanungin ko kayo ngayon. Alright? Sabi natin kanina, when we were discussing the Dalton's atomic theory, <clears throat> okay, we said that atoms from the same element are the same or identical, but atoms from different elements Okay, differ from each other. Okay, now, sabi natin, if we have an atom of sodium and an atom of magnesium, okay, sabi natin, they are different, right? Tama? Type yes. Okay, thank you. Now, if we get a proton from sodium and a proton from magnesium, are these two protons the same? Yes or no? Type it. Yes, no, no. Oh, dito ko yung tanong, ha? If we get a proton from sodium and a proton from magnesium, are these two protons the same? No? Yes? Oh, iba, iba na yung sagot nyo, ha? They're different. They're the same? Okay. Why are they the same? No? Why are not? Why are they not the same? If your answer is no. Same. Because same mass, that's one. Same charge, that's one. Plus, all protons, whether they come from what kind of atom, they are all. Ayan. All right. So, let's continue. Ayan. Uh, going back to what we were talking about. Okay. Ayan. Protons class or electrons or neutrons. Okay. From whatever atom they came from, all of them are the same. Okay, why? Kasi ito nga yung what makes uh, or composition ng atom. These are the uh, particles that make up an atom. Para bang if we want to make a hydrogen, di ba, we get one proton, one electron, okay, or probably one neutron, and then we have a hydrogen atom, di ba, something like that. Okay, or if we want to make a helium atom, then we get two protons, two electrons, and probably one or two neutrons, all right? Then we have a helium atom, okay? Ayan. Just like if we build a house, we, we use uh, hollow blocks. So, pare-pareho lahat ng hollow blocks that make up a house. So, the same is true with this particle. So, all atoms have the same protons, all right? Kasi isa yan. Now, my question, my next question is this. Okay, if Okay, if atoms are made up of the same kind of proton or the same kind of electron or the same kind of uh, neutrons, then why is it that a sodium atom is different from a magnesium atom? 
Okay. Can you give me an answer for that? Oh, another answer. Can you give me another answer? Again, the question is this. If electrons, protons, and neutrons are the same for any atom, then why is it that a sodium atom is different from a magnesium atom? Any answer? You can write it on our chat box. Oh, wala pang nananalo. Some more. Try more. They come from different elements. Oh, nga. Oh, that's true. They come from different elements. Okay, very good. All right, we have an answer. Because these two atoms have different composition. Diba? Different composition. Yeah, so it has something to do with the composition. All right? So let's take a look at the composition of atoms. I am. All right. So for an element X, yeah, walang element na X ang symbol, ha? Huh? This is just a hypothetical element. It represents any element. And you're given this symbol, you will be able to determine the composition of that element. You can determine. Why? Ano ba yung A? Ano ba yung Z? By the way, this is a symbol and you don't change symbols. Okay? So you cannot interchange A from Z here. Z should always be in that position. Okay? Which is written as a, sabi nating subscript before the symbol. And A is written as a superscript before the symbol of the element. Okay? Now, how come we can determine the composition, okay, of an element if you are given the symbol? Ano ba yan? Okay? Z here represents the atomic number. It is the atomic number. And it represents the number of protons in the nucleus of each atom of an element. Okay? All right. So, I hope, class, that by this time, it is already established to you na the structure of an, at, of an atom is one where you have a nucleus and in the nucleus you find the protons and neutrons. Okay? And you have electrons that are in orbitals constantly spinning around the nucleus. Okay? So I hope you can imagine. So as we discuss class, I hope you imagine. Kasi um, this subject Physical science na may pagka-chemistry, may pagka-physics is very abstract, okay? And to concretize that, you've got to, to, to go through some mental experiment or mental imagination. That's why we make use of models para mas madaling maintindihan, alright? So I hope by this time, it's established to you in your mind what the structure of an atom is, okay? Alright, so... Now, with this, sabi dito, Z here is the atomic number. And the atomic number gives you the number of protons in the nucleus. Alright, now may I ask now, tanongin ko kayo, do you see, okay, I want you to recall uh, the periodic table. Oh, I hope you still remember, okay. Uh, and I hope all of you have seen what, uh, have seen a periodic table. Kano itsura, right? Now, have you seen or have you encountered or do you know any two elements in the periodic table that have the same atomic number? Okay, can I get an answer? Are there elements? No, wala talaga. Okay, so that means no two elements can have the same number of protons in the nucleus. So if we say atomic number one, okay, it is exclusive for hydrogen. If we say atomic number two, it is exclusive for helium, three for lithium, diba? four for beryllium, five for boron, six for carbon, etc., etc. Okay? Yan. So, dyan pa lang masasagot na yung question ko kanina, diba? With that alone, you can already answer my question earlier. Right? That the differences of atoms from different elements 
is because of the differences in their composition. All right? Next, number two. What about, ano ba yung A? Uh, yes, A. It is the mass number. Okay? If the atomic number represents the number of protons, mass number represents the total number of neutrons and protons present in the nucleus of an atom. So with that, madidetermine mo na kung ilan ang protons at ilan ang electrons. Right? Tama ba? Okay, so let's have uh, some examples. Ayan. Okay. With this symbol, okay, what element is this? Can I get an answer kung anong element ito or anong atom? Sige, write it down. Carbon. Very good. What about the other one? The other one? Nitrogen. Okay, very good. Alright, so carbon, the atomic number is 6 and the mass number is 12. So, how many protons and neutrons are there in a carbon atom with this symbol? Anybody? How many protons? Okay, six protons. How many neutrons? Six neutrons. Okay, very good. All right. Well, how did you get six protons from the atomic number? How did you get six neutrons from the mass number? Sabi natin kanina, the mass number is protons plus neutron. If, if for that 12, six of that is already protons, then the remaining six would be what? Neutrons. What about electrons? How many electrons? No, you don't divide by two, Mr. Adrian Hamor. To get the number of neutrons, you don't divide by two. Okay? You subtract six from 12. Kasi merong iba, like for example, merong ibang carbon atom that has 14. 14 ang mass number. Okay? Oh, if the mass number is 14, okay, how many neutrons are there in that carbon atom? Anybody? 8. Ayan, very good. Okay? So you don't divide, huh? you subtract. You subtract the proton from the mass number and that will give you the number of neutrons. Alright? O kasi, o bakit merong carbon tapos 14 ang mass number? Ano yun? O mamaya, pag-uusapan natin ng kauntiyaan mamaya. Alright? Uh, let's, let's finish this one first before we go to that. Okay. So here, how many neutrons? Oh, sorry, how many protons? How many neutrons? 7 and 7. Now, ano na lang ang kulang natin? number of electrons. Okay? So, for carbon, itong atom na ito ng carbon, this one, that one on the screen. Okay? Can you see the the, the cursor that is moving? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. In this atom, how many electrons are there? Sige nga. Wala. O, oh, sige. Kasi hindi ko pa sinasabi. <laughs> one? <laughs> no. Alright. You don't see any charge on the symbol. Okay, you don't see any charge on the symbol. Okay, so that means you have a neutral atom. Pag neutral ang atom, okay, you have equal number of protons and electrons. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, so if, it's, if that's the case, then for this atom, how many electrons are there? Let me see. <clears throat> oh, come on. Give me an answer. Six. Okay, very good. Six. Hindi zero, ha? Hindi zero. <laughs> Teka, nalilito na yata kayo. Baka ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay eh, equal number eh, tapos ang charge ay zero. No. If there are equal protons and neutrons, oh, let me make this very, very clear para ma-clear ma, ma out yung, yung misconception if there is sa isip nyo or nakakanalilito kayo. Okay? It's like this. If the atom does not have a charge, oh, mamaya, that would become clearer pag nagkaroon tayo ng, uh, as we continue. Okay? Wala kayo nakikitang charge dito nakasulat na positive o negative, right? Wala. That means the whole atom is electrically neutral. Bakit? 
Kasi there are equal number of protons and electrons. Okay? In the symbol, you don't find a number that represents the electrons. It is given by the charge. Okay? Ayan. <clears throat> Kasi kung 6 protons at 6 electrons, the total charge is 0. Kasi positive 6 plus negative 6 equals 0. That's why you don't find a positive or negative in the symbol. Okay? So here, that means equal ang protons, equal ang with the electrons. So if you have 6 protons, there are also 6 electrons. Alright? Is that right? Okay? So the composition of carbon is 6 protons, 6 electrons, and 6 neutrons. And the composition of nitrogen is 7 protons, 7 electrons, and 7 neutrons. Okay? So let's have some more exercise. Oh, sige. Give me the composition of this sodium atom. How many protons, how many electrons, and how many neutrons? In that order. So parang pen order. So 11 watt. Oh. Kung gusto niya sabi niyo 11p, uh, 11, 11, 11, talaga? Oh, another answer? Any other answer? Remember, the mass number is 23. Okay, 11, 12, 11, 12 protons, <laughs> oh my god. 11 protons, 11 electrons. Ayan, may, may nanalo na. Okay? <clears throat> Very good, Leyan, Ishin, Sara. Okay, 11 protons, 11 electrons, and 12 neutrons. Okay? Oh, do you figure out why? Oh, the atomic number is 11. So that means there are 11 protons. And since there's no charge in the symbol, then there should be also 11 electrons. And since the mass number is 23 and 11 of that is protons, then the remaining 12 should be the neutrons. Ayan. So that's how you determine the composition of atoms. Alright? O, isa pa. One more. What about this one? Okay. Twelve, twelve, eleven. Very good. Very good. Ayan. May nanalo na kaagad. O, ba? Ang dali-dali lang. It's very easy in class to determine. Basta kompleto yung, yung symbol. Alright? So, moving on. Okay. Yan. Formation of ions. Kanina, we were be talking about... Uh, we were talking about neutral atoms. Okay? So, this time, let's talk about... Uh, ions. How are ions formed? Okay. When an atom has equal number of protons and electrons, normally the atom is electrically neutral. Yan. Normally, yan yon. However, if an atom loses one or more electrons, it becomes positively charged. Okay? It becomes positively charged. It gains electrons. If it gains electrons, it becomes negatively charged. When this happens, an ion is formed. Okay? So, therefore, an ion is any charged particle which is simply an atom that has lost or gained electrons. Ayan. O, ba? Bakit nagiging positively charged pag nag-lose ng electrons? Anybody who can answer that? Anybody? Hello? Oh, dito, sabi dito, when an atom loses one or more electron, it becomes positively charged. Bakit kaya? Or when it gains, it becomes negatively charged. Why is that so? Come on. Hindi balance. Okay? Alin ang hindi balance? What is not balance? Okay? Uh, partly correct, but incomplete. Which one is not balance? Come on, Edre. Kompletuhin mo yung sagot mo. Edre, Josh, please complete your answer. Which is not balance? Ah, come on. Protons and electrons. Very good. 
Okay, very good. Yes. Hindi na balance. Remember, the charges come just from these two particles. Okay, protons are positive, electrons are negative. Now, if it loses an electron, then that means the whole atom is mas madami ang protons, kaya positively charged. Pag nag-gain, mas dumami ang electrons, kaya negatively charged. Okay? Ayan. I hope that is clear. Sige, let's take a look at the composition of ions. Okay. Now, in the same manner, natinignan natin kanina yung composition ng, ng atoms, okay, it can also be determined if the mass number and atomic number are also given plus, of course, the corresponding charge of the ion. Okay? Like this one. If calcium lost two electrons, there should be a positive two doon. Aside from, or, or if a nitrogen gained electrons, there should be a negative three doon. Okay? So, if you're given this symbol here, yan, okay? Without the charge kanina, alam na natin, protons and neutrons, nagkaroon ng charge. So, that will have an impact on the number of electrons present. Kaya with this symbol, you have 20 protons, 18 electrons. Why? Because it has lost 2 electrons and 20 neutrons. Remember, sabi nga, calcium lost 2 electrons in this case. Okay? Is that clear? Ayan. So, yung charge is just on the gaining or losing of electrons. Hindi ginagalaw yung number of protons. Why? The electrons are the ones spinning around the nucleus of the atoms. Sila yung mga nasa outermost energy level. Kaya madali sa kanilang mag-leave mag or mag-enter mag from one atom to another. But the protons, okay, hindi ginagalaw yun. Because the moment na pakialan mo, pakialaman mo yung protons, it's no longer chemical reaction class. You are, what? Uh, having a nuclear reaction. Okay? So, ibang topic yung nuclear reaction. We don't discuss that here. Alright? So, yun lang. Kaya, kaya dito, you don't change that. Okay? Yung 20 doon for calcium. Pag naging 19 yan, hindi na yan calcium. Potassium na, di ba? Pag naging 18 yan, hindi na yan potassium, argon na, or whatever. Okay? So, here in this uh, discussion, kalimutan muna natin yung addition or subtraction ng protons. Okay? We're only focused on the losing or gaining of electrons. So, which means that any chemical reaction is indicated by just... Uh, the activities of electrons. Alright? Okay. Oh, so, let's have some exercises dito. Oh, sige nga. Ay, yan. May example ko na pala yan. Let's have this one. How many protons, how many electrons, and how many neutrons? For this one. Fluorine negative with that composition. Sige nga. 9 protons, 10 electrons, 10 neutrons. Any other answer? Any other answer? Mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11. Okay, very good. May nanalo na. 9 electrons. Ah, sorry, 9 protons, 10 electrons, 11 neutrons. Okay? Paano nangyari yun? The atomic number is 9. So, there should be 9 protons. There's a charge negative. Plus, by the way, pag wala naka-indicate na number, like for example, negative 2, negative 3, it's understood to be 1. So, because it is negative, negative 1, this means this atom gained 1 electron. So, 9 plus 1 is 10. And then, the number of neutrons, 20 minus 9 is 11. Alright? So, that's how you get the composition of ions. Okay. Kanina, di ba, uh, I, I introduced I have introduced yung carbon 12 na mass number, carbon 14 na mass number. In fact, meron pang carbon 13. All of them are the same carbon atoms because all of them have the same atomic numbers. Where do they differ? Singa? Saan sila nagkakaiba? Sorry, I don't have that on the PowerPoint. Oh, oh. Oh, 
Sige, okay na tayo dito sa composition ng atoms. Oh, papa-end na kasi tayo eh. Alright? Kanina, sige, I introduced a carbon-14. So, ibig sabihin, carbon with 14 mass number, carbon with 13 mass number, carbon with 13, 12. With mass number 13. O, sige. There could be three carbon atoms. All of them are carbon in the sense that all of them have the same atomic number. Okay? Remember that. Now, one carbon atom has a mass number of 12, another has a mass number of 13, and another has a mass number of 14. Where do they differ? Sige nga, give me an answer. Write it down on the chat box. Where do they differ, class? Siyempre, it's a mass number. Ho, oh, talaga? Number na electrons? O, oh, lahat yun neutral, walang charge. Sige. Where do they differ? They differ in number of neutrons. Very good. They differ in number of neutrons. Okay. Ang tawag sa mga atoms na ito ay isotopes. Okay? Isotopes. And I think I need to include that in my next uh, discussion. Uh, sa, sa next PowerPoint. Okay. Anyway, they're called isotopes. So, isotopes therefore are what? Atoms of the same atomic number but different mass number. Kasi ang nag-iiba-iba sa kanila ay number of neutrons. Okay, assuming that all three carbon atoms are what? Neutral. Okay? So that's all about the composition of atoms and composition of ions. Thank you. God bless you all.